download. Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank on WCCS. It is 812 right now, and it is time for our interview with Caroline Mercury of Indiana Regional Medical Center. Our interviews are brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Caroline, good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? Doing excellent. Thank you very much. So, uh, today we are focusing on skin cancer because July happens to be Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Now, talk about um, your position at the hospital. Obviously, you 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 have a great uh, focus on skin cancer, right? Yes, yeah. So we have two clinics, outpatient dermatology clinics in Blairsville at the IRMC Chestnut Ridge facility. Mm -hmm. We also go to Punxsutawney once a week on Tuesdays. So. The summertime is definitely our busy season. A lot of people want to get checked for skin cancers, get skin examinations, so definitely picks up around this time of the year. I imagine that's because of the fact that we're outdoors most of the time in the summer because we want to get out, we want to have fun at the beach or at the lakeside or going hiking or doing a lot of outdoor activities because of the pleasant weather. Yeah, so everyone's outside taking their vacations. Uh, a lot of people work outdoors, so definitely spending more time, especially with this heat wave. So everyone mm -hmm. wants to stay by the pool. Yeah, definitely. So when should someone get screened for skin cancer? So that is all risk dependent. It depends on a few different factors. So if anyone in your family has ever had melanoma skin cancer, that's a type of skin cancer that has a genetic risk. Mm -hmm. So we tell patients that first degree relatives of anyone who has had melanoma, that would be a parent, sibling, uh, child, they should all be screened. Yeah. There's really no clear-cut guidelines, which can make the that a little confusing. So we evaluate the risk factors, one of them being sun. So if you work outdoors, if you have a pool, if you are vacationing every year, mm -hmm. those are all reasons to get a baseline examination at some point. So there's really no age um, it all just depends on how much sun you're exposed to. That's what I was about to ask next, because with a lot of uh, a lot of illnesses and diseases, they recommend you start screening at a certain age. But with skin cancer, you can get it as a child. You can get it as, a, as an adult. Yeah, much less common in children. So it, it's more common in adults who have had years and years of sun exposure. But there really is not a wrong age to get screened. It all okay. just depends on what you're concerned about, and what your risk factors are. What type of screening is done whenever you're looking for skin cancer? So when we do a screening, we're doing a full body skin examination. So we're pretty much checking all of your skin from head to toe, the scalp, nails, um, trunk extremities, yeah. all of those areas. So it is a in-depth, thorough exam, and during that exam, we're looking for anything that may not belong on your skin. So mm -hmm. we're also going to be finding a lot of benign growths too, but we do a very thorough examination. You say thorough. How long does it usually last? Usually our patient visits are about 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, so, so not really that long. Yeah, we they're, they go pretty quick, but we still are thorough and looking at all spots. Because mm -hmm. when I thought of thorough, I thought, oh, this is going to mean this is going to be an hour at least or something like that. But it's, that's pretty good that it's 15 minutes. Yeah, normally it it's all just depends on what you have on your skin. So some people have more things that may be concerning that it takes longer to look at. Other people have few moles, few lesions. It all just depends. So what are the next steps whenever skin cancer is detected? So if we find something on an exam that is suspicious for skin cancer, the next step would be a biopsy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get a little nervous about a skin biopsy if they've never had one before. So I usually talk to patients about what that procedure will look like. And it's pretty straightforward. We do them in our office and mm -hmm. usually only takes about 30 minutes. People are in and out. Uh, we use local numbing medicine, so it's not painful, but All right. yeah. So, so again, it's another quick procedure, but, but again, it's also a thorough procedure, it sounds like, as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm surprised that, it, that uh, people think of, as you said, biopsy is a very scary word, but uh, really it just sounds like it is a very quick procedure to just eliminate the, can the, scan the cancer that's on the skin and then get out. Right. So we will remove the lesion and then it goes in a jar and gets sent to the lab where the pathologist will analyze it. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's what happens with it. Yes. Other than skin cancer, what do you commonly treat? 
Well, we see a lot of different skin conditions, and the great thing about dermatology is no day is ever the same. So uh, yeah, my, I can my imagine. days are very different. Some days I see a lot of rashes or eczema follow-ups, psoriasis follow-ups. We do a lot of full-body skin examinations, so screening exams, yearly examinations for people who have had skin cancer before, and we're also looking at a lot of different growths that people will point out on their skin. So that can be anywhere from a sunspot to a precancer to a mole. I imagine I imagine with the rise of like medical shows on TV like the pimple popper people and all that type of stuff, I imagine that that has led to an increase probably in, in patients. People love Dr. Pimple Popper. Yeah, uh, there's I, definitely, I don't, though. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some extreme cases on that show, so we aren't seeing cases like that every Thank, day. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> But, but again, I imagine that it's probably r r given people an interest in maybe getting themselves checked out, too. Yeah, it is definitely good if you've never had a screening before and there's some areas that you may be concerned about. It is good to get a skin cancer screening examination. What is a major thing that people should look out for, say, if they're looking at, looking at things on themselves and saying, mm, this is out of the ordinary? What are some out of the ordinary things that people should look out for that may be a warning sign to skin cancer? Yes. So all skin cancers look different from each other, but in general, the skin cancers that come from the sun, that's basal cell and squamous cell skin cancer, normally they're going to look like a non-healing sore or a pimple that bleeds, looks crusty, does something that's unusual. Mm -hmm. Melanoma is a bit different. That usually is the really, really dark spot on your skin that yeah. appears out of nowhere yeah, and so grows rapidly. We think I, I think I think a lot of people might think, oh, that's just a mole on my on my skin, but that shouldn't. That sometimes is not the case. Yeah, so it is good to get your moles checked. Now, a dark mole does not necessarily mean that it's melanoma, but it all just depends on your risk factors, what your hair color is. So. People with darker hair will have darker moles. It all just depends. Mm -hmm. So during the summer months, obviously some of the major factors are sunscreen, uh, long sleeves if, if you can for, uh, for skin protection. What are some other things that people should keep in mind? Yeah, I mean sunscreen is number one because mm -hmm. that's going to protect us against the sun. It's going to protect us against aging. So we recommend a sunscreen that has SPF 50 or higher. Mm -hmm. And I've been telling a lot of patients – Get a moisturizer that has SPF built into it so you can be applying it to your face and neck every day. Those are the areas that are exposed to the sun all the time. That's actually a pretty good idea, getting the moisturizer with sunscreen built into it. And it's not just uh, the number on the SPF, but it's also the technique because uh, I keep hearing, you got to reapply uh, at least 90 minutes or so or every time you come out of the water, stuff like that. Absolutely, yep. So the, the sunscreen lotions work better than the sprays. Mm -hmm. So we usually tell people the sprays are good for just touch-ups, but really.